from the scars of her parents' past, would she be able to believe in love? Lacan won't be able to turn back time, even how remorseful he is. He thinks that he totally lost Fang Shan and couldn't do anything about it. He doesn't want to repeat the same mistake, so he used people efficiently in his work that made him a grand marshal. He can now afford any courtesan he desires, but still, he cannot see any other's faces but her child, Mao Mao, who was adopted by his uncle, Luo Men. Lu Men was a former doctor. He was dismissed due to a trivial issue in the palace. He was disowned by Lacan's father, the head of their clan, and he was also the reason why Lacan was sent abroad as they were close. Now, he was living in poverty with her adopted daughter. Lacan didn't experience himself how a father should be like since his own father despised him due to his illness that also made his father leave his mother for another woman. Because of this, he really doesn't know how to become a father to Mao Mao. He dotes on his only daughter to the point of near obsession, just a mere self-satisfaction. Mao Mao is disgusted with his biological father, Lakan, so she hides herself from him. He was offering the madam at the Verde Gris to buy her out. Luckily, she was adopted even if she is a courtesan by birth. She was born and raised in the Verdigris house in the Pleasure District. She was also despised by her own sickly mother, Feng Shan, who was isolated in the back part of the brothel. The so-called three princesses in the Verdigris house were the one who raised her as a baby, especially Pyrene, who miraculously breastfeeds her even though she hasn't had a child before. Afterwards, she was adopted by Lu Men. Mao Mao considered those three as her precious big sisters that taught her many things about men. She was also taught by his adopted father, who is one of the best apothecaries in town, about poison and herbs that became her obsession. She loves to test poison on her own skin and formulates a cure for it. That is why her left forearm was covered by bandages. One day, she was kidnapped and was sold to the rear palace as a slave. She hides her literacy since she hates the fact that the kidnappers would still receive a bigger portion if she would have a raise in her salary. However, in an incident in the palace wherein a series of illnesses and deaths of emperor's heirs, she was the one who figured out the cause of it and was able to prevent the death of the high-ranked concubine's child, Gyokuyo. Despite her effort to hide that she was the one who sent the cryptic message, she was discovered by a famous eunuch because of his pretty face, Jin Shi. Growing up in the red light district has endowed Mao Mao with exceptional street smarts. Calm, mature, and sharp-witted, she rarely falls victim to deception or charm especially by the likes of Jin Shi. She was promoted as a food tester to Lady Gyokuyo. Jin Shi was very intrigued about her, as she was the only young woman in the palace that didn't get swayed by his charm. She is also very smart that every time he asks for Mao Mao's help, she was able to solve almost all of it. He is testing Mao Mao's abilities as an apothecary. He also treats her like an investigator or a detective. He was really impressed and that impression plus the special treatment in an odd way turned out into affection. However, Mao Mao got dismissed in the palace which made Jin Shi in a melancholy state and eventually realized how valuable she was to him. Mao Mao started to become a courtesan, where in an event, Jin Shi was also there. He was so surprised and happy that he badly wanted to touch her. When she gave up on how persistent he was, she was startled that he touched her lips that was meant to indirectly kiss her.
The next day, Jin Shi bribed the madam of the verdigris house to get back Mao Mao. He also knew Mao Mao's weakness, so he also gave her a peculiar insect that made her overjoyed. When Lacan heard that some high-ranked official brought a courtesan from Verdigris house into the palace, he was now targeting that man, Jin Shi. Mao Mao realized he cannot run from his father forever, so she made a cunning plan. She made polishing nails as a fad in the rear palace. Almost every woman polished their nails. Lacan noticed and didn't like it as it is a flashy red that hurts his eyes. What he remembered was a subtle red dyed from balsam flowers. He was surprised to see the exact color polish that the woman he once loved wears. And what's more, it was her daughter's nails. Mao Mao invited Lakan to the game that her mother and father used to play, chess, his father's favorite. She knows that he won't refuse her, as it is a once-in-a-lifetime offer, after avoiding this eccentric man for how many years. She knew Lacan was the best in this game, but still made a bet. If Lacan wins, she will be her legitimate daughter after her contract with Jin Shi. But if she wins, Lacan should buy any courtesan he wants in the Verdigris house. Another rule she made was the loser in every round will drink a cup of alcohol she prepared. She also mixed a medicine on those three cups. The medicine will be poisonous if you drink it three times. She is aware that she will get beaten by Lacan easily, but she also knows that he won't allow her precious daughter to get poisoned. So, he deliberately loses at the third round to intentionally drink a cup that has the medicine. In this way, Mao Mao won't get poisoned and he will win the next round. However, he passed out as what she mixed in the drink was sake, which is considered a medicine. She knew that her father has no alcohol tolerance and it was her intention to make his father get drunk so he would not be able to play the next rounds and made Mao Mao the winner by default. Waking up in the Verdigris house where they brought Lacan, he was given by Mao Mao through Mei Mei a dried blue rose. Mei Mei is one of the three princesses of the Verdigris house, Mao Mao's big sis. She is also an apprentice of Feng Shan and is close to Lacan. Mao Mao's message about the rose was, even after it has died, you can preserve its form. Lacan didn't get what she meant about it. What he really wanted was to be close to her daughter, the only human face he can see, or so he thought. The time he was asked who was the courtesan he is going to buy as the penalty of losing the game, he is going to choose Mei Mei, as she had helped him so much in the past. Even though Mei Mei has secret feelings for him, she made a way for him to choose properly. She let Lacan pass through the back door despite the madam's protest. This was how Lacan figured out what the blue rose meant. Feng Shan is still alive, and even if physically lost her beauty, she is still the same person that he loves. He was elated to see the woman he was longing for so many years. For him, she's still as beautiful as a balsam flower. He doesn't care how much wealth he's going to spend just to buy her. He only wants Feng Shan to spend the rest of her remaining life by playing the game that brought them together. Now that Lacan and Feng Shan had their happy ending by believing in love? Will Jin Shi and Mao Mao have theirs? Please don't forget to subscribe and hope to see you on the next video.